Welcome to an introduction of uh, Repetir Host. Repetir Host is a slicing software that we use to manage the STL files in uh, the printing system. And we are using Repetir Host for the yellow Colido do-it-yourself printers and the see-through Colido 3.0 printers. So we can go through these basic settings in in this one video. Before you connect your printer, you will see this. This is the print area, 20 by 20 by 17 centimeters in the Colido do-it-yourself model. And if you are using the Colido 3.0, the form will be slightly different because it is uh, 15 by 23 by 20. So the first thing you do is you click on connect and after a while you will see a different view here in your it will take some time as you can see and by the way if it does not connect that means there is a configuration issue it will tell you that it cannot find the printer then make sure that you, the printer is on and also that you are using the right uh, COM port for the connection, which in my case is COM7, but it can be something different as well. I'll apply this and then click on connect. And after a while I have connection. I can see that because I, when I go to the manual control tab in here, it will say idle. And if it says something then other than idle, it means that you will not be able to use the printer for until you are uh, ready to go with the idle text on the top. It will say something like six commands remaining, in which case you need to disconnect the printer, unplug the power, uh, turn it on again, and uh, reconnect until you come up with an idle on the top here. Uh, these options here are for moving the the print uh, head uh, on the X and the Y directions, and this is for moving the print head in the Z direction. Now, this last object here is for uh, moving the wire. If you are, if you want to see that the printer is actually uh, extruding, you can go here and click on then to have 10 millimeters of wire come through the hot end and when you are changing the wire for a different color, for example, you probably want to use the 50 millimeters so because it takes some time for the new wire to come through the hot end. And if you are uh, removing the wire, you need to turn on the heat and then click on minus 50 to get rid of the old wire. Uh, the first thing you do when you come here is that you turn on the extruder by clicking on this uh, extruder button here and you will see how the temperature starts to rise and if you want to change the filament you can turn the heat up to 215 and now the extruder head will go up in heat until it has 215 degrees. Um, if you are using the Colido 3.0 which has a heated table then you will need to turn on the table heat as well but the Colido do-it-yourself does not have a heated table, so you don't have to worry about that. While the heat is going on in here, I will show you how to manage your uh, viewport. When you add something, file, uh, load. I have something on the desktop, I seem to remember, yes. And I place it here. You can already see that the object is not manifold. This essentially means that it's not watertight. You can try to press here and see if it gets fixed. It was fixed and then it is good to go. So what you can do now is you can move it uh, by clicking here and grabbing it or you can uh, change your view, isometric view, front view, top view, parallel projection. I like this view the best without the uh, isometric view. 
like so. And the scroll of the mouse will move the place. In here you have a few options here. You can add an object, you can copy an object. If I wanted to make two of these, I will click on copy and then say how many copies I want, but I don't want to do that. I can center it with this button here. So if I move it somewhere else, I can always get it back in the center. With this I can scale it if I want to make it five times bigger. It looks goes like that. But if I don't want the thickness to be five, I will unlock this and put on maybe two in the set. And then it is um, then it looks nice. Uh, this is for rotating the object. If you want to rotate it around the set, like so, you can click in here. And if you want, they are actually the cross section and the mirror. I haven't used that much at all. So the object is now placed. The size is proper. Then I can go to the slicer tab, and this is the same regardless of the printer. As you remember, there are four settings you must always consider. They are layer height. They are infill, they are um, speed, and it is the heat is the fourth one. Uh, you have a list of presettings in here in the print setting. The print setting is what governs the first three options, and then the filament settings is the one that governs the heat on the filament. So, in many of the machines you will see a list of uh, settings such as default uh, 0.320 recti and that means that the layer height is 30, uh, 0.3 millimeters. You will have three layers per millimeter essentially. And 20 means that the infill is set at 20% and recti means that the infill is of the type uh, rectangular or rectilinear actually. You don't have to worry about the printer settings because these are all the same for all of the printers and as soon as as long as you come in here with the same account then you don't create your own user account uh, you don't have to touch the printer settings if you come and you create your own account on any of the printer machines that means you will have to go through the installation of the printer in your own account which you do not want to do and i, I strongly uh, for, uh, forbid you making uh, accounts because it takes 10 gigabytes of the hard drive and we don't need that. And the filament settings means default 215, that means that we are going to use uh, 215 degrees as the printer uh, uh, filament temperature. If you need to change, if you don't find the settings that you need, you can click on configuration and configuration will give you another window called the configurator uh, which is uh, rather different from this one but it will now allow you to touch any of the settings you need to do so you make it big you come in here and you can see that the settings you can uh, go for print settings or you can go for filament settings or you can go to printer settings most of the time what you want to do is to uh, edit the print settings And here you see the list that you saw in the PowerPoint, layers, infill, skirt and brim, support, speed. Uh, we don't have multiple extruders, so you don't have to go below speed and try to do anything. So let's start with the layers and perimeters. Uh, the layer height, if I wanted to make a 0.2 layer height, I would set it like so. The first layer height might be 0.3. This means five layers per millimeter. Vertical shells means the walls of the object. The more walls you have, the stronger your object is, but most of the time three or four perimeters is fine. The same goes for the, uh, solid layers, top and bottom. If you want to make it a bit more solid, uh, add five, so that it will be three on top and three on the bottom. Uh, the seam position is actually good at random because otherwise you wind up with a vertical line running down your print. And that is usually a, an aesthetic fault. Then we go to infill and you set it to be maybe, you know, 15% infill is, is good for most, most purposes. You can have the rectilinear or um, the uh, 
any of the other fill patterns, but I must warn you, rectilinear is the fastest, and uh, Hilbert curve is so slow that you will die of old age before your print is done. So use rectilinear, and if you want more uh, strength to your piece, use honeycomb or cubic. These are good ones for that. And as for the infill patterns, again, you can use these, but uh, these are very much slower if you don't want to use the rectilinear. Leave the combined infills and whatever as they are in the printers, you don't need to worry about those. Skirt and brim. If you want a brim to help your object uh, stick to the table better, uh, use the exterior brim width and set it as many millimeters as you like. Five is usually good and this will just print one layer of extra footprint for your object. This is uh, especially important in using the Colido 3 because it has a heated table and the piece may get loose. But with the Colido um, do-it-yourself models, it's very rare that they come off the, off the table. So uh, don't use the skirt. It doesn't do you any good. It merely wastes material. If your object needs supports, turn it on by saying generate support material and then uh, set your overhang threshold to be 60 degrees. This, this is usually when it starts to create object uh, supports for your print. Uh, don't worry about the parts in here. Then we come to speed, and in any other printer than Gyro Gearloose, the new Ender 7, uh, you should never pass 60 millimeters per second uh, travel, which means non-print moves can be set at 70 and the first layer speed is set at 40 and that is always a good idea so that the first layer gets done a bit more slowly but use 60 for any other speed unless you have a specific need to go less than 60 millimeters per second. So now that I have done this I click on the save button and I will say that this is 0.2 and this is actually 15 recti and the speed is is at 60 so now you can read from the profile already that this is open to 15% infill at rectilinear and with 60 millimeters per second so when I close this I can now go to the other settings the filament settings and in here you need to check this this must be 1.75 for all the other printers except Scrooge, which has 3.0 mm, uh, sorry, 2.85 millimeters of uh, diameter. Set the extrusion multiplier at one. Set the extruder layers, uh, uh, extruder heat to be 215 if you are doing you in PLA. And if it should happen that your printer starts a, a knocking sound or a ticking sound, that means it's not able to push as much material through it as it would need. So you can then set this to be 225 for uh, the for the uh, print heat. There are materials where you can go past uh, to uh, 30 even, but uh, you need to be careful with those because there is a piece of Teflon tubing inside the hot end of the printer and it will be ruined if you uh, go past 240. So 225, 230 is probably the most uh, heat that you can apply. And again, if I click on the save button, it will say default 215. So I will say PLA because I have PLA material 225. Okay, now I have the four settings done. I can go back to my Repetir host. And now I have a new list in here. I can do this. And I can do that. And then when I click Slicer, it will give me the sliced version, which is printable. Now, do remember this. No matter what changes you make to the settings, you always need to do the slicing last before you try to print. Otherwise, it will use the previous print file, the settings file, and that is not going to be uh, including any of the changes that you may have made. So I will just click on Slice with Slicer. It takes some uh, moment, and it will now create 
a G code file, which you don't have to worry about because G code is just um, for the printer to move the print head and the table. So now you can see if you go to show layer range and you drag the drag the um, slider up, you can see how it is going to print. So you see it all the way from. You also see that the print time is going to be 39 minutes. This is not very accurate, by the way. And you may not leave the printer to run on its own for any length of time, not including going for a cup of coffee. This is going to need 63, um, sorry, uh, 600, uh, 6 meters, 6.3 meters of wire. And all that remains is that you click on print and your machine will start to print. You also have the start print button in here. And if you need to kill the print, you can just click on kill print and it will stop whatever it is doing at the, at the time. So to uh, recap, the first you connect to your printer, then you turn on your heat in the manual control. And then you place your object with the file load, check it in the object placement, make any changes to the size or whatever, go to the slicer tab, set the print setting, set the filament setting, hit slicer, let it slice, and hit print. And you will have a nice print in 39 minutes 40 seconds. We will uh, have a look at the other slicers in uh, separate files. So this is going to be just for Colido 3.0 and Colido Do-It-Yourself, the yellow printers.